to talk about this important and timely topic. We have um, four universities with us today. And I should say, we're, we're looking forward to the discussion and hope that you'll have time to take our questions. Um, the order in which we're going to go with the questions today, for the first question, we're going to go to the College at Florham, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson's campus in Madison, and then on to Ryder University, um, Roger Williams University, back to Metropolitan Campus here, and then on to Lock Haven University. Over to you, Ambassador Kamal. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you uh, from the Ambassadors Club at the United Nations on a subject which, as you have rightly said, is of great importance and of topical importance because it is exercising all of us and impacting all our lives around the world. And to deal with this, we have a distinguished panel at our end. Uh, to my immediate left is Ambassador Haraguchi. Ambassador Haraguchi is the distinguished permanent representative of Japan. He has been here for about three years now. He has been a deputy foreign minister of Japan, a director general in charge of all economic matters in his foreign ministry, a member as an ambassador in uh, Geneva, which makes him a member of the Geneva Mafia <laughs> at the United Nations in New York, and a fellow from Harvard University. He also has intimate experience of the United States because he has served in the United States in Washington as a diplomat also. Uh, to his uh, left is uh, Ambassador Farhadi, Ambassador Farhadi is the distinguished permanent representative of Afghanistan. Uh, he, has, uh, he has the unusual distinction uh, of being, as far as I know, the only ambassador uh, in New York who has presented credentials twice, uh, once in 1993 and once in the year 2002, and that makes him uh, these, really one of the senior most ambassadors at the UN and a person to whom we turn for uh, wisdom whenever we are in doubt or in trouble. He has a checkered career and that again makes him very unusual uh, because he has been the Deputy Foreign Minister of Afghanistan. That gives him one status. He has been a professor at two important universities, Kabul in Afghanistan and the Sorbonne in Paris. And that gives him a totally different status. And then he has been a prisoner under the Soviets, and that gives him a third status. And so we have a person of great versatility, prisoner, professor, ambassador, foreign minister. Uh, uh, and it is my pleasure to welcome him uh, at this table. <clears throat> with their permission and with yours, I'd like to lead into the subject myself. Uh, Ten years ago, the former Secretary General of the United Nations wrote a report, and a very important report, called Agenda for Peace, in which he pointed out that the peacekeeping function, which is one of the primary functions of the United Nations, and which it has done for 58 years now, for 55 peacekeeping missions, that this function was changing in character, because wars were changing in character. And from being external wars, they were becoming internal civil wars. And therefore, he said, peacekeeping has to be divided into three aspects. Peacekeeping, which is traditional peacekeeping, of introducing a buffer between forces when they have finished their fighting. Peace enforcement, in which the United Nations plays a much more solid role by introducing troops which stop fighting which is going on, and obviously which involves then uh, dangers for the peacekeeping forces of the United Nations. 
and finally a totally new thing which he called peace building <clears throat> which was picking up the fragments of states which had been destroyed either by invasion or by civil war and which had to pick up the pieces in order to recreate a state that is the subject of our discussion today the nation building which occurs when a particular state <coughs> because of foreign intervention or because of internal strife has seen all its structure totally destroyed and has become a fragmented uh, jigsaw and how do you reconstruct it into a proper state again now in this effort of nation building and peace building which in which the united nations unfortunately has is beginning to gain a lot of experience because we have gone from cambodia to east timor to kosovo to afghanistan to iraq all of these are exercising us and affecting our lives and all of you one does not have to tell this to any audience in the united states how deeply afghanistan and iraq has affected life in the united states and so when you analyze this long series of experiences from cambodia to afghanistan and iraq you find that there is one constant factor in all these and that constant factor is the presence of japan because japan is constantly a major provider of economic and financial resources in an effort which after all is as much an effort in economic building up as it is in security building up and so it is uh, a, a great honor for us to have the ambassador of japan sitting with us today to tell us about his experience it is of equal delight to me is to have the ambassador of uh, uh, afghanistan uh, because afghanistan uh, which we know reasonably well in pakistan because we share a very long border and a very long history with afghanistan uh, afghanistan is a nation of noble people which was put to the test by a nasty invasion in which over 10 years or 12 years the country was ravaged and destroyed 1.5 million afghans lost their lives i think about 30 million landmines were planted in the country out of which about 10 million still remain in the country and so the very structure of the country was uh, destroyed and when you see a noble population subjected to this type of pressure it 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 affects all of us and then subsequently all of us know the later history of afghanistan and how it has impacted Uh, gone off in a direction in which its view of uh, of uh, of the world led it to deny uh, education for its children for its women and to begin seeking extension uh, in some sort of a uh, warped concept of jihad by flying planes or by giving giving uh, refuge to people who intended to fly planes into the twin towers and so i would like to end this by asking two questions of my distinguished panelists uh, what is your judgment of the experience of the united nations in nation building has it been successful or has it failed has it been partially successful in which case what are the challenges which exist in order to make it totally successful for the future Let us begin with the master Haraguchi. You have the floor, sir. Well, thank you, Ambassador Kamal, and thank you for your very kind words uh, for my government activities in various parts of the world. Uh, as for your questions, uh, um, if I speak uh, conclusion first, I think the United Nations has been successful partially. Partially, uh, I can't say. Unfortunately, the United Nations was uh, always successful. and but uh, in certain cases the united nation has been successful for example in the case of uh, east timor uh, i think or or the cambodia i think we uh, the un activity has been quite successful whereas in case of kosovo certainly we were able to uh, stop the fighting among themselves but still the uh, 
this 